On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, HMS Prince of Wales drops a shaft. I'm your host, Sal McCogliano. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. If you're new to the channel, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Well, a lot of excitement about the departure of HMS Prince of Wales, one of two British aircraft carriers recently built. She was heading out on a deployment over to the Americas, uh, big amount of attention was focused on this her first really major deployment heading out but she has now experienced mechanical issues that is preventing the departure of the carrier what makes this really interesting is the number of stories and the different reasons behind why the ship is not departing so let's go ahead and jump into the story but before we do that take a moment subscribe to the channel hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out so HMS Prince of Wales, along with her sister ship, HMS Queen Elizabeth, are two brand new aircraft carriers of the Queen Elizabeth class built by the British as part of their United Kingdom carrier strike group. The Queen Elizabeth, which just recently completed a round the world trip, really, over into the Pacific through the Middle East, uh, had been really a demonstration of that vessel designed to carry the new F-35 Lightning jump jets. They are a return for the Royal Navy back to operating aircraft carriers. They operated three previous aircraft carriers of the Invincible design, much smaller carriers that operated the Harrier jump jets. Prior to that, they operated full-fledged catapult aircraft carriers such as the Ark Royal. But the Queen Elizabeth and now Prince of Wales is really the British return to this concept of operating large deck aircraft carriers a what is basically a medium size aircraft carrier these vessels which cost quite a bit almost uh, over seven billion pounds for the two of them come in at about sixty five thousand tons so smaller than an american nimitz or ford class carrier but much larger than the previous in invincible class carriers uh, that brings us to our stories, as you'll see here. Here is the Telegraph story. Britain's new three billion pound warship grinds to a halt over, quote, failure to grease propeller shaft. I, I don't think that's the issue that has it, but the Telegraph is going to go for a little bit of a sensational news story. Here is the Guardian. UK's defective NATO flagship could miss landmark flight trials. So um, they're just labeling the entire class as defective. And then over here, here you have the BBC with Royal Navy HMS Prince of Wales breaks down off the south coast. Let's go right to Rear Admiral Morehouse, who is on board HMS Prince of Wales and actually did a brief little video that explains the current situation. Good afternoon to you all from HMS Prince of Wales off the coast of Portsmouth. I'm Rear Admiral Steve Morehouse, and I'm responsible for making sure Royal Navy ships are ready to deploy wherever they are needed. Shortly after the ship sailed on Saturday, a mechanical fault was discovered with the starboard shaft. I've been to the ship today to see for myself what the issue is and how we in the Royal Navy can work together to make sure that the ship can successfully return to her tasking. After an initial assessment, it's likely that the fault will require repairs which may impact the ship's programme. The ship is now moving to a more sheltered anchorage for further inspection and then we'll be able to provide further comment on the nature of the issue and the impact to her current schedule. We've reacted quickly to the emergent defect and are working closely with industry partners to resolve this as soon as we can. Rest assured, the Royal Navy continues to meet its commitments to deliver operations and to keep the UK, our partners and allies safe. So Admiral Morehouse uh, alludes to a mechanical issue with the vessel. This story on GCAP by John Conrad has a different issue. And it talks about it based on a report from the UK Defense Journal, where propeller damage to the vessel was a result of it hitting something on the seabed that occurred on Saturday, shortly after leaving southern England on this rather kind of major issue. If the vessel struck bottom, if the propeller had hit something that could cause mechanical damage throughout the shaft, the gearing, everything along the lines, not the least of which is a bent propeller or damaged propeller. Uh, something like that will require dry docking. 
if, if it is substantial enough and you actually strike something with a propeller and you get the propeller out of line, that could be the issue. Now the propeller can go out of line on its own too. And that could be that mechanical when they talked about no grease in the propeller, which again, very unlikely, but there can be mechanical failures that do cause propellers to overheat and warp. What this story continues to say is more is that sources aboard the ship told the UK defense general that the damaged aircraft carrier will likely head to a dry dock in Amsterdam in the Netherlands for repairs. Uh, that's fairly substantial because there's only so many dry docks that can accommodate a ship of this size. And obviously, number one, Amsterdam would be close by. It's right across the English Channel for it. It's interesting to note that there are no dry docks available, I guess, in Great Britain for this vessel. I don't know Great, British, uh, Great Britain's dry dock situation as well as I probably should. But for a vessel this size, 65,000 tons, uh, you know, it, there could be a dry dock available for it, but it could be occupied by another vessel. And the question is, how fast can they get the turnaround here for the vessel? Obviously, she's been towed back in. She's off the uh, Isle of Wight. And with divers going down to assess the damage, they will see very quickly whether or not that propeller struck anything on her way out. They'll raise questions about the navigation of the vessel, the survey of the harbor, what exactly did she hit, and how did she hit it? Uh, and then, of course, this vessel was about to embark on a fairly substantial mission and now it's going to be delayed, if not canceled. So big implications here for the safe navigation of HMS Prince of Wales. It will be interesting to see what the final resolution is on this. Again, a lot of newspapers, a lot of news sources claiming what they know, uh, but it seems like that statement by Rear Admiral Morehouse talking about a substantial mechanical issue. The question is what caused the mechanical issue? Was it the grounding or was it something with the propeller and, and engine room wise? We'll have to wait and see. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll learn about new videos as they come out. Give it a thumbs up, share it across social media, leave a comment. And if you can support the page by either hitting that super thanks button below and contributing to the page, or at the very end of the video, click on the Patreon link and become a patron of the page. We have weekly, excuse me, monthly or yearly options, but more importantly, this allows me the time to put this program together and cover major news items as it regards to global shipping. So next video, this is Sal signing off.